Welcome back to Rise and Shine at 9. So not only is today the 100th day of the year, but it's also National Sibling Day. That's right. Dan and I both have siblings, so I guess this serves as our celebration. Let's take a look. Yeah. Uh, yeah, actually, I think we're going to do that later in the show. This, okay. was a, this was a little bit of a miscue. Uh, we do have stories about uh, Felicity Huffman uh, pleading yes. guilty. We have stories about the measles outbreak in New York City. All of that and more, and plus weather. And a, yeah, yeah, South Carolina. Uh, yeah. All of that and more coming up after uh, we roll this intro. All right, welcome to Rise and Shine at 9. Uh, coming up soon, we have top stories, like we said, about the measles threat in New York City and uh, a death at a fraternity party. Yes. Yeah, but first, we're going to talk about the college admissions yeah. scandal. Yeah. Which is crazy that it's still happening. Yeah. Uh, our top story today is an update on the college admissions scandal. And Maddie, you have more about this, don't you? Yes, I do. So. Lauren Laughlin and 15 other celebrity parents were charged Tuesday with an indictment for money laundering and bribery through a fake charity set up through Rick Singer. Laughlin is accused of paying $500,000 to get her two daughters into the University of Southern California. Both were crew recruits despite not actually participating in the sport. Parents of the students have not stated whether or not they will plead guilty, reports of which should be coming in. That's insane. Five hundred thousand dollars is a a, a lot, a, a big chunk of money. money. And I don't even think my tuition for four years here at Oswego yep. would no. be a fifth. I don't even of think that. my student loans will cover that much. I hope. Well, I you <laughs> would probably have a really good payment situation <laughs> if you did. Two hundred fifty thousand dollars a student to go yeah. to USC. I'm not, you know, Too a business them. major. I'm not an econ guy, but that seems like a dumb amount of money. Yeah. To, to spend uh, to just get one student into exactly. USC. Yeah, it's a lot. We have another story about another USC in South Carolina. Yes. Yes. A South Carolina college student has died after an accidental fall at a fraternity party. Stacey Almas has more. Hilton Head 911, do you have a police, fire, or medical emergency? Um, it's fire. It's, I need an EMT. I think this woman is dying. She just fell and hit her head. Friday night, uh, Hilton Head Island. Fire rescue and the sheriff's office responded to a uh, building on Enterprise Lane on Hilton Head Island. It was by this building, home to an event productions company, that first responders found 20 year old Caroline Smith. The incident report states Smith was lying on the side of the building by a garage door. First responders attempted to uh, resuscitate Caroline Smith at the scene and were unsuccessful. The students were at a frat party for Furman University. Witnesses told officers they had been drinking. Smith's boyfriend said she told him she wasn't feeling well and then moments later fell to the floor unresponsive. It was a bystander that okay, called 911. She's still unconscious. She's still unconscious. Is he still doing CPR? Yes. A spokesperson for Furman says Friday's party was not a university event. Furman students have traveled to Hilton Head uh, to attend the Kappa Alpha fraternity formal, which was scheduled for Saturday night. The Kappa Alpha order confirmed the Furman chapter planned Friday's party. Is she breathing? I, I don't think so. Her chest isn't moving. Questions still surround Smith's death. Did she really hit her head? And were underage students served alcohol? We're investigating whether or not underage persons were served alcohol at this party. A further investigation into the motives of her death and whether or not there was alcohol served to minors is underway. I think as as a college student that it's very hard to like be like in that situation and what are you doing and I think that the fact that a bystander actually called I think that's great. Yeah but definitely I mean this has become a, a more of an issue so mm -hmm. please, when you go yes. out and you decide to go to things like this, please bring somebody that you trust and be responsible, okay? Yep. 
Uh, we're going to move on to the measles outbreak. We have an update on that. Yesterday, New York Mayor Bill de Blasio declared a state of emergency through the entirety of the city. Uh, this comes after a recent outbreak of measles in the city that has spread to worrisome levels. Residents living in select zip codes in the city will be ordered to get the measles vaccine or the MMR to slow the spread of the disease and to protect those who have yet to be affected. Members of the city's Department of Health will look at the registry to identify recent uh, residents who have received the vaccine and those who have not. If residents refuse the vaccine, they are subject to a $1,000 fine. Uh, and that's, I think, responsible. I think this is a really good decision uh, on By the mayor, part. definitely. Yeah, Bill de Blasio, congrats to you. Thank you very much. Uh, the crazy thing is there's been 468 people infected through the five boroughs yeah, since exactly. October. And 8,000 have been vaccinated since September, so it's a little crazy that this is still going on. And as you mentioned earlier about the measles parties. Yeah, so one, oh my God. What, what you're Tell talking about. What, what you're talking about is uh, in, in the article that I, uh, we were reading this morning, uh, getting all this information, they were warning people, uh, one of the main doctors uh, up in New York, I forget her name. Uh, uh, yeah, she was saying that to avoid measles parties, which is uh, bringing children who are not vaccinated uh, to like a play date and bringing somebody who has the measles uh, to hope, hopefully spread the measles to those children. It's wild. To, and, the plan is to make them stronger and immune. I don't understand that, but don't do that. Thank you for getting vaccinated. Please vaccinate. Uh, yeah, that's yeah. insane. Yeah. Coming up after the break, we'll have an inside look on National Farm Day, and Dan and I have some fun sibling pictures to celebrate National Sibling Day. That's right. That's going to be fun. And uh, real quick before we go, let's take a quick look with Storm Team 10 meteorologist Liam Healy. Liam, how's it look outside? Well, Dan, it looked quite a bit colder today. Remember, right by 11 o'clock yesterday, we hit 60 degrees here in Oswego. Right now, 16 degrees colder than it was yesterday this time. You can see that right here in the temperatures, too. 33 degrees here in Oswego and 30s all around, 26 down up in Harrisburg. Now we're going to see some clear skies today, but it's still pretty dry out there. But we're going to have all that and more coming up in just a little bit. believe in patriotism. We believe in our country. For 100 years, veterans have been impacting our nation through the American Legion. Learn more at legion.org slash we believe. It's back and better than ever. One student can win up to $25 in cash. All on Oswego's favorite game show. Spin to win. Every Sunday night at 9, only on WTOP 10 TV. Good morning and welcome back to Rise and Shine at 9. I'm Storm Team 10 meteorologist Liam Healy. Starting out for your morning here, we're seeing a pretty cloudy day here. 33 degrees looking out across Lake Ontario this morning. And check our current temperatures across the region. We are seeing it's cold out there today. It's not going to get too much warmer today, but we are looking towards your weekend to see some warmer temperatures. We'll talk about that in just a little bit. 
We look out further across New York State. Cold temperatures are in regime across the entire state. Not until maybe you get down towards Kingston down here to my left. 44 degrees. Pretty nice there today compared to here at least. And it's also dry out there today. So make sure if you're gunning out the door right now, make sure you get the lotion on your hands. It's dry. 22 degrees is your dew point right here in Oswego. I know I walked out this morning. Was not ready. So check out our future guys here. We're checking out our temperatures. 40 degrees about your high today. See some breaking in the clouds if you get on through the rest of the day. But we move into Thursday. Another chilly morning expected, but clear skies. Hoping to get some more sun tomorrow. And as you see that, as right as we head through the day, some clouds move in. It's part of some rain that might move in on Friday, but we are watching that. All right now, let's focus on 47 degrees is your high tomorrow in Oswego. Yeah. So we're heading into the coffee cast. You're going to need that coffee today. It's below average temperatures once again, 40 degrees, seeing those mostly cloudy skies. As we head into the future, guys, we're going to check out Friday. We see that rain begin to move in. This is Friday, 4 p.m. We get to our high, 65 degrees. We're getting into the 60s on Friday. That is something to look forward to. It all depends on when this rain arrives in the area. That's going to be what could break or break our 60 degree day. And as you head in, you see the rain move in heaviest around 930. So maybe you're getting in, getting ready for bed, get that nice rain sounds getting for you. And as you head through the rest of the day, we clear out and another 60 degree, 60 degree day possible for your Saturday. Great start to your weekend there. Save for the little rain on Friday evening. As you head in, you see those temperatures just drop off a little bit as you head towards the night. Now, your seven-day forecast, we're seeing some pretty impressive temperatures. Those first two days, not really 40, 45, but Friday, Saturday, seeing those 62 and maybe up to 64 on, you know, for your weekend, starting your work week with a little bit of rain. We'll be right back. You're watching Rise and Shine at 9. The second I got on the campus, I knew Oswego was the place to go. There's a place for everybody at Oswego. This school just opens the world to you. Have the opportunity to explore and to learn so many different things, not only about yourself, but the people around you and the world. It definitely is about the student. I felt it to be very about me. Now that I'm here, I can't imagine myself anywhere else. Everybody can make something because I think everyone has a spark of creativity and the reason that I have to keep making is because I don't think my life would be as fulfilling without it. If you make things yourself, that means you're not cowering in fear. You're out there taking chances. That, I think, is my way of saying I love you to the world. All right, now I want to hear why you make. Share your own Why I Make story today. Visit whyimake.org. I mean, they were, they were, do you think Bryce Hubbard, Tommy Johnson, Survivor, Nathan Evaldi? Welcome back friends to Rise and Shine at 9. So not only is today the 100th day of the year, but it's also National Sibling Day, as I mentioned earlier. Dan and I both have siblings, so I guess this serves for a celebration. That's right. Let's, Let's do, take a look. We have those pictures. Let's yes. do Maddie's first. Aww, I miss them so much. So that's my sister in the middle. She's younger than me, and that's my brother on the, on the left end. He's also younger than me. I'm the oldest. My sister lives in Alabama. She goes to school there, and my brother is still in middle school. He's literally my mini be me. He's my best friend. My sister is very rambunctious. She's crazy, but um, she's a cheerleader, and she's loving what she's doing. I miss her so much. And actually, this was taken last time I saw my sister was for Christmas. Unbelievable. Yes, and so you it was said taken. She's a cheerleader then. in Alabama. Yes, but um, it's at a community college. She's actually transferring to UCF 
in the oh. fall, and she's going to continue cheerleading. Go nice. She's a star. That's insane. All right. Well, my you chose one a lot more recent than oh. mine. Yeah, this is uh <laughs> Look at you with the Disney sticker. Well, that's actually yeah, so here's the story. So this is me and my sister Libby, who is now uh she's actually going to go into med school. She's going to like wow. a school at Boston Gen. So awesome. Good for her. Well, yeah, she's the golden child. She's much smarter than me. That's why <laughs> I do TV. Uh, but uh so this is after uh our first trip to Disney ever. Uh, a couple of stories with this. First, we, my, our parents told us we were going to go to my Nana and Bumpa's house in Michigan, oh. and we were so excited to go is there. Is that why we were in the Michigan hat? Is that why yeah, we were Yeah, I mean, that's it? a Michigan State hat, yeah. yeah. Uh, and we were super excited to go to Michigan, and then they took us to McDonald's, like they took us out of class at lunch and took us to McDonald's, like we're actually going to Disney World, and I cried because I was, I was like, this, I have trust issues now. I don't know where I'm going. <laughs> But this is the last day of the trip, and I was so mad at my parents that we had to leave Disney World. Like I, like I was like, you could, you could just get a job here, <laughs> just install carpet here, Stephen. You could just live here too. It's fine. That's, well, I did end up living there for oh, a yes, good did, bit right? of time. Yeah, yeah, it's, yeah all that glitter. Where did you live at that gold. time when they took you? This to, was this yeah. was when I was still in uh, uh, Liverpool. Oh, I was okay. In the Syracuse wow. area. So. Oh, God, that's yeah. so exciting. A surprise trip. I know. Oh, love wow. it. Yeah, they're great. Aw, <laughs> I love Thanks it. Thanks for that. Uh, love you, love you, Libby. All right, <laughs> our own Juliana Scro and Alexis Bruning interviewed some students in the Murano Campus Center for National Farm Day. They got a little bit of information. Let's take a look. Hey, guys, I'm here with Juliana Scro, the entertainment reporter of Rise and Shine. Now, Juliana, what are we doing today? So we are going to be going around and asking students what they consider farm animals, for one. And two, we're going to ask them to make their best farm animal noises because it is National Farm Animal Day. And it's going to be fun. Yay! So here we go. All right, oddly enough, I just ran into my friend Johnny in the hallway. Johnny, what is your favorite farm animal? A cow. They're very majestic. And, uh, you know, they produce milk, which is kind of cool, I know why. Yeah, do you like milk? Uh, yeah, I like milk, you know, it's good with cereal. It also helps with smoothies if you're going to make one. And, uh, you know, milk helps make ice cream, so, you know, vanilla, vanilla and chocolate twist is the best. Yeah, no, I get it. Cows. Okay. Chickens. Okay. My favorite farm animal is a pig. A llama. A cow. Um, my favorite farm animal... I don't even know if it technically qualifies, but I'm probably gonna go with the duck. I like ducks, they're cute, okay. Uh, a cow, a pig, a goat. I'm gonna have to go with llamas. They are the protector of the sheep with their powerful back hooves and their impressive kicking power. They can defend the sheep from any predator. That's why I think they are the best farm animal. <laughs> your favorite farm animal? I would have to say probably a goat, because the way you like, they scream and then you scream back and then they just kind of fall backwards with their legs in the air. That's just me during finals week. Relatable, I think we all can relate. If I had to say farm animal, I think it would be a dog. Okay, yeah, yeah. you see dogs on farms. Can you make your best farm animal noise? It can be any farm animal. I guess I can make a cow noise. <laughs> <laughs> can you make a goat noise for me? Yeah, I think I can try. Okay. <laughs> animal noise you want? Like farm any, animal? Any farm animal? Yeah. No, like ocean animals? No, they're not on farms. Um, I mean, I probably could make like a like a chicken noise, like a. Do it again. What's a nay? That's a horse. <laughs> um, yeah, frog. I think she's. Oh, 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 oh. <laughs> yeah, a chicken. See, you're doing good. You got this. It's probably gonna be a little like quack, quack, quack or something. And... <laughs> Three, two, one, animal noise. Moo. Uh, 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 All right, there we have it. A horse. That one's easy. What are you doing here? Who, who, you got, you, did you get that? Yeah. <laughs> okay. Oink, <laughs> oink. I'm gonna go all for it. Um, I'm gonna do like the physicality and everything. But here I go. And 
that was Lexi Bruding's Chicken Noise, everyone. Stay tuned for more. Yeah. <laughs> Wow, uh, I'm uh, kind of speechless after that oh one. Oh my gosh, that if was we, great. Can we talk about how there are some interesting characters, specimens of human being on this campus? Some characters. Wow. The guy said a sheep. And he said because of their hooves. Other animals to protect sheep. Yeah. That's an alpha male move. Yeah. He, was, he picked it because the hooves. Was, Let's just move. Let's go. That was I just. Can't. Uh, that was something. Oh my gosh. A Florida girl is raising her five siblings, receiving quite the surprise from her community. After Samantha Rodriguez lost both her parents, she stepped up to take care of her five younger siblings. According to Fox 8 Cleveland, the sheriff's office said after hearing her story, a group of anonymous donors bought the family a Nissan Versa. The community stepped up to help in a big way. The Rodriguez fam siblings range from 6 to 15 and Samantha is 20. The siblings are eternally grateful for the community's generosity. That's, That's insane. Great. That's, I, I, love, I love stories like that. That is, is so, like, that warms my heart. Why can't the world be more like yes, this recently? Yes, exactly. It's, yeah, it's... Honestly. Uh, God, I love it. God bless all y'all. Yep. We're going to take a quick break and we'll be right back with entertainment with Alexis that made the chicken noise. Stay tuned for more Rise and Shine. <laughs> Most of us like to be out in the sun. That's why sunscreen and other safety measures are key to protecting your skin from aging and cancer. The FDA recommends using a sunscreen with an SPF of 15 or higher. Also, look for broad spectrum on the label. That means both harmful ultraviolet A and B rays are blocked. Remember, SPF plus broad spectrum equal healthy fun in the sun. Visit www.fda.gov sunscreen for more information. A message from the U.S. Food and Drug Administration. I'm a lot more confident and a lot more sure of my abilities. At Oswego is where I really found myself and became the person I am. You work hard and you play hard. I love the environment of SUNY Oswego. Good morning, guys. Welcome back to Rise and Shine at 9. I am your entertainment anchor, Alexis Bruning. I am so glad everyone enjoyed my animal noises, uh, my chicken. I will not be doing any more, so please don't ask. <laughs> But, um, so today in entertainment, Paramount announced Tuesday that a Grease prequel is in the works. The project, titled Summer Loving, will focus more on the meeting of Danny Zuko and Sandy Olsen that was described in the hit song Summer Nights. Writer of Big Fish and Charlie and the Chocolate Factory, John August, had been given the task of writing the film. Though it premiered in 1978, starring John Travolta and Olivia Newton-John, Grease has continued to be popular in pop culture. The film has been reissued multiple times throughout the year and had a sequel, Grease 2, starring Michelle Pfeiffer. In 2016, Grease went live on Fox TV, starring Julianne Hough as Sandy and Vanessa Hudgens as Rizzo. Neither the director nor a cast has been attached to the project yet. Also, Apple will be releasing a mental health series on their new streaming platform, Apple TV Plus, in 2020. And the co-creators and executive producers are none other than Oprah Winfrey and the Duke of Sussex, Sussex Prince Harry. Kensington Palace says the pair has been developing the series for several months and are looking forward to sharing such an important project on this global platform. According to Apple, the series will incorporate mental illness and mental wellness, inspiring viewers to have an honest conversation about the challenges people face and equip viewers with the tools to survive and thrive. 
In March, Winfrey said the series will discuss how the scourge of depression and anxiety, post-traumatic stress, addi post -traumatic stress Addiction, trauma, and loss is just as devastating lives across the globe. Winfrey was one of the guests at Prince Harry and Meghan Markle's royal wedding last year. So I know we've talked about Aunt Becky, but let's hear about Lynette Scavo from Desperate Housewives. Felicity Huffman has pled guilty and feels ashamed for actions. Here's more. Federal prosecutors in Boston say actress Felicity Huffman will plead guilty for her role in a college bribery scam. Huffman and 10 other defendants have agreed to plead guilty to one count of conspiracy to commit mail fraud and honest services mail fraud. Several others have submitted guilty pleas to various other charges. We believe all of them, parents, coaches and facilitators, lied, cheated and covered up their crimes at the expense of hardworking students and taxpayers everywhere. The Desperate Housewives actress was accused of paying $15,000 to facilitate cheating for her older daughter's SAT test. Huffman then disguised the payment as a donation to a fake charity set up by Rick Singer. Singer is accused of being the mastermind behind what prosecutors call the largest college admissions cheating scheme ever prosecuted in the U.S. Singer pleaded guilty last month to multiple charges including conspiracy and obstruction of justice. In a statement released Monday, Huffman apologized for her actions and said in part, quote, my desire to help my daughter is no excuse to break the law or engage in dishonesty. According to the plea agreement she signed, the government is recommending jail time at the low end of the sentencing range, followed by 12 months supervised release and a $20,000 fine. I'm Meredith Wood reporting. Huffman could face less than a year in prison if convicted of all charges, which isn't too much compared to what Lori Loughlin yeah. is going no, through right now. No, yeah. but still, $15,000 yeah, to get a private SAT yeah. test? Yeah. Have your kid I really could have used failed. that. Have your kid <laughs> fail. Just if they, if, they yeah. don't, if they can't get in. And Study they need, like everyone else. If they yeah. need $15,000 to get a good test score yeah. that will get them into exactly. a school. They shouldn't go to school. Exactly. We're just gonna, they don't deserve it. I'm going to move on to something that more people care about. <laughs> oh. Sunday, Game of Thrones. Been waiting Ooh. all winter. It's been, well, more winter than that, it's been over coming. a year. It's been over a year. All right. I don't know if you guys care. Not. Liam. Yeah. <laughs> so we talked about the, the brand theory. First of all, who, who do you have winning the throne at the end of the whole thing? My heart wants Danny to win. Yeah. But. I get that. In the end, I could see Jamie Lannister on the throne. I wouldn't be mad about Jamie. I would love Tormund too. We're hitting Why a very specific. That'd be, that'd a very, be, that's a very out there theory. That's left field. I'm a wild card. <laughs> uh, we, we're going to move on to. I saw them once. You, who'd you see? Um, I don't know. Some Game of Thrones. They were the main characters. They were at the bar in London, that, right next to my apartment. Well, there's only 67. <laughs> oh, it was Jon Snow. Jon Snow and the saw Kit girl Aaron. with white Aaron. hair. Okay. Anyway, <laughs> uh, it's it's time to go. Thank you guys for tuning in today. Yep. Have a great day. Bye. <laughs> <laughs>